to Benin City about four years ago. And when I came in, a lot of things caught my attention. Um, I lived in Lagos all my life before then. Um, the question would be why will a young man pack his load and leave Lagos and come to a city like Benin City? I was doing very well in Lagos. Um, I wasn't struggling. But I realized that there's a lot of stuff that um, I can do in, in Benin City. Before I moved into Benin, I, I consulted for NEPA, then PACN, then BDC. So it gave me a lot of time to understand the business environment of Benin City and the those state. And within that time, I was able to have handshakes, um, sit out with a couple of um, business owners and entrepreneurs in this state. And one question kept bugging me. Why is it that a lot of small businesses don't survive? Why do businesses rise up with a lot of thrust and a lot of power, and within a couple of years, they become a shadow of themselves? If you walk along Sapley Road, for instance, I think it's one of the busiest um, roads in Benin City, you see that there are a couple of businesses that were booming. Uh, I don't want to mention names, but you and I know there are businesses, there are supermarkets that were booming very well at some point, but today it's just nothing but a shadow. The question is why? And I got to, to look at some of these um, issues and Research shows that 20% SMEs manage to survive in, in Nigeria. Just 20%. What happens to the other 80%? Why are they folding up? You tell me the reason is um, there's no capital. But I will tell you our problem is fundamentally not capital. Funding is the least of the problems that small businesses have. Ask those that won you win, they'll tell you. Some of them are already begging for transport fare. So that means fundamentally, the problem was never funding in the first place. So why are these businesses folding up? All right? 90% out of every 100 SMEs, small businesses rather, in Nigeria, fail in their first year. I'm not here to scare you because I know there are a lot of entrepreneurs in this place this morning. But I'm here to let you know what I've been able to research and what I've been able to, to um, come up with as what we can do to overcome this plague that is plaguing our, plaguing our business uh, domain in Nigeria. All right? 80% of SMEs fail within five years. Why? 99 of all new businesses fill the first 10 years. I was doing a business projection recently, and I began to ask, why are they asking me to project my business for the next 10 years? And I began to research. That's when I came across this. That 99% of businesses that don't have foresight for 10 years end up folding up. The question is, what can be done? What is the problem? Why are businesses folding up? Today, you see a young man, vibrant, active, doing business along the streets, and tomorrow you see him, he's nowhere to be found in the order of things. Why? What can be done? All right, firstly, let empathy drive your innovation. You see, the problem we have, a lot of entrepreneurs have, is that we are not in touch with the realities that face us as a generation today. Our young kids came up, by the way, the, the, the young boy, the one that had a VR set by his right and by his left, that's my son. Yeah. <laughs> okay, our young kids came up and they talked about virtual reality. Today, people don't think the way we used to think, the way we used to do business in years past. I was privileged to meet um, a young man in Lagos at, um, at some point, and the guy came to me with a very brilliant idea, very, very brilliant idea, very, very brilliant business idea, and he wanted my inputs, he wanted me to be part of the idea and everything, and I took my time, after about two or three months of thinking about it, I told him, no, I 
can't be a party to it. He said, why? I said, because this business will not survive tomorrow. He said, why am I thinking like that? I said, because the way people think. What is empathy? Empathy is being in touch with the way people think, trying to get yourself behind them to see things from their own perspective. Every business today has to be driven by the thrust of people's thoughts. What is the frequency of people's thoughts today? If you're setting up a business today and your business is not looking at the way people are going to be thinking in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, I bet you, in the next five years, you'll be out of ideas because people are no longer thinking the way you think. Today, everyone is talking about escaping reality. Virtual reality is becoming the mainstay. Everybody wants to live in a world where they don't have to go to the toilet, they don't have to eat, they want to live in a world where they don't have to leave one place to get to another. They live in a world where they just have to slap themselves and pick a call. They, live, they want to live in a world where they just snap their finger and coins come in and they can spend it. So everyone is trying to escape from the realities that we face every day. So if your business model is built around what we see, the realities that we face, I mean, the realities, the things that we're experiencing today, there's very, very high chances that you won't survive the next three to five years. I'm not scaring you. I'm just telling you that the challenges that small businesses face in our generation today, they are enormous because people, people's thinking pattern changes every day. Every day. Once upon a time, the biggest market in the world was Walmart. They were thriving and building properties and building houses, building shops everywhere in the world. But suddenly, Amazon came up and started building applications. And today, Amazon is the biggest. So what happened to all the structures that Walmart had built? Suddenly, they become anachronic, no longer in keeping with the times. So all their investments is nothing. It's gone down the drain. And I tell people, I was speaking to someone, I told them, I said, look, be busy buying buses to transport people from Benin to Lagos, Benin to Port Harcourt, Benin to Abuja. Someone somewhere is busy devising a device that you walk into a room in, in Benin and you walk out a door in Lagos. So suddenly, all your buses become useless. As a fashion designer, you are so excited. I can make very beautiful designs. I can get your clothes ready in one week. In China today, you walk into a room and they spray paint on you and you walk out and they cut out a dress from your body. Everything is at the snap of a finger. So what business model are you building? That's why businesses are failing. Because people are changing. Everything is changing. Everything we do today is different. Tectonic shifts in how we get our news, buy things, listen to music, hang out with friends. Today we don't even hang out physically. I lived in Lagos for seven years. I never saw my cousin. He was living in Ekbe. I was living in Ekorodu. Seven years. All we do is WhatsApp. Hey, guy, how far? So everything is changing. So how we hail a cab? Before now, you carry umbrella, go to junction, stand, hey, taxi, taxi, taxi. Now you punch your phone and you Uber up. And the taxi pulls up right in front of your house. So while you were busy doing your own taxi along the road, taxis are busy entering the streets and getting to people's houses. So what's your business model? How we shop for cars and even monitor our health are creating new kinds of companies that put us, the customers, at the center of everything that we do. So the question is, what is driving your business model? What is driving it? Is it the way people are going to be thinking in the next 10 years? Show me a man that has an idea that is going to come into reality in 10 years' time. And I'll tell you, my hands are up. I want to invest. Because the business today, the businesses today, if they don't innovate, they stand a high chance of dying. I spoke recently to the person and told them, either innovate or you die. Because people are changing. People are changing. The next thing you have to do is sell. See, I've come to realize that in Edo State, in Benin City, in Nigeria, in Africa as a whole, young people, the moment they start the business, the first thing they think about is calling themselves CEOs. Yeah, if you think entrepreneurship, the next thing you think about is calling yourself a CEO. But don't you think it's too early? The reason why our businesses don't survive most times is because we get to celebrate our success too early. 
We take the title of CEO, buy a brand new car, move, change our houses to a bigger house, for begin to spend profits that we've not earned. And so when the time comes and there's a deviation between our, our, the, 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 our estimation and what really hits us, we discover that we are completely out of business. We've spent our working capital. So sell. The first task you should give yourself as an entrepreneur is a chief selling officer. Everyone you employ as your first startup employees should help you to sell. If you are not selling, my brother, my sister, say, mm, you are dying. Because at the end of the day, if your business cannot generate the numbers in sales to sustain itself, then there is a high chance that it will fail. At the end of the day, comes, every business comes down to numbers. Forget about the packaging and the aesthetics. Every business success is driven by numbers. And that brings me to the third and last thing. Let information drive the direction of your decision. Now, my little time I spent in Benin City, I realized that a lot of businesses in Benin City don't have information. That is very, very pathetic. You tell someone to build a system around his business so that he can get that data, analyze the data, and based on that, make decisions. He tells you, no, it's too expensive. And so most times, we use rule of thumb. A friend of mine sent his wife to go and learn how to drive, and, he asked it, and the wife asked the person I was teaching him, okay, how do I know which side is my own? He said, take, I divide the road. The right hand are your own. The left side are for the person where they come. Now, that's what we do with our businesses, right? We just use our intuition. We get up in the morning, we just feel like, and we make a decision. Not with data, not with information. What drives your business decisions? Decisions should be made based on available information. If you are going to project your business, you should project your business based on the fact that you've done an analysis of what you have done previously, and then you've looked at where you are and where you want to get to. That is strategy. That is strategy. That drives strategic thinking. And gradually, we're moving away from strategic thinking today to what we call design thinking. How many of us have heard of design thinking? All right. We've moved from strategic thinking to design thinking. Design thinking is taking the client one at a time and innovating a solution that meets that particular client's need at that point in time. And then you can bank on it. So how do you make these decisions? When you go to Lagos, you buy a set of phones, you buy them for 100 naira, you come to Benin, you sell them for 150, and you begin to flex your muzzle. You have made a 50 naira profit. You forgot that you transported to Lagos. You forgot that you made a couple of calls to get the sale done. You forgot that you bought paper bag to put the phones inside. You forgot that even in your shop, you have to pay electricity bill. You forgot that you, 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 you have to buy stationery to, 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 to document some of the things you do in your business. You forgot that you have salaries to pay. So you begin to flex that you've made profit of 50 naira, when in actual sense you made a loss of 150 naira. But how will you know if you don't have information? So that's why I'm standing before you this morning, gentlemen and ladies, and I'm telling you that one of the core reasons by what I've seen in Benin City, why businesses are becoming gradually becoming a shadow of themselves, is that they don't have information. I went into a very big supermarket, one of the biggest supermarkets you know in Benin City today. I went into that supermarket and I asked them, how do you keep information? Nothing. What they do? is, how do we call it, data gathering. As an accountant, your work is not to document transport expenses, 5,000, uh, telephone expenses, 10,000. You move beyond data gathering to analyzing the data. Because if you tell me 50 naira, 100 naira, 70 naira, 17 naira, 25 naira, as a CEO, it means absolutely nothing. But what does a profit of 10 naira mean to me in the next 50 years? If I make 15 naira now, and I continue to make 15 naira for the next 12 months, how does that impact on my capital? How does that make my business grow? How can I plan to expand? Will I be able to add that extra shop to my business? That's what information does to you, not data. And what this very big supermarket that we talk about is doing is just gathering data. We have 16 units of socks, 17 units of uh, toothbrush, and we sold five. What does that mean? At the end of the day, because there's no analysis of this information, they end up stocking up items that are irrelevant. 
tying down their capital. An item stays on the shelf for two years. Whilst people are busy looking for another item they can't get to buy. They don't even know which one is fast moving and which one is slow moving because there's no information. Gentlemen and ladies, if you're going to survive in business today, you need to take a stand. You need to carry your business. Your business should consume you. Your business should give you sleepless nights. Your business should make you stay up all night, gather information, analyze information, and then you can beat your chest and say, yes, I was there, but now I'm here. Thank you so much.